Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. To you, Lord, I'm grateful, Allah the Sustainer. For since I'm remorseful, Allah the Forgiver. For blessings, I'm hopeful, Allah the Bestower. Gracious and merciful, Allah the Creator. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم We are still discussing subject of imamate and the general issues of imamate after completing the subject imamate of Imam Ali عليه السلام in the Holy Quran and in the traditions uh, today we are discussing imamate of the rest of the imams, you know, beside Imam Ali alayhi salam, the other uh, 11 imams, descendant of Imam Ali alayhi salam, naturally total are 12, and about imamate of Imam al-Mahdi salamullahi alayhi, uh, particularly. Uh, what we know from the subjects we discussed before from the Holy Quran and Hadith of the Holy Prophet, uh, that imamate is a continuous phenomena in existence or in universe. Uh, we discussed that when we discussed the ayah, inni ja'alun fil ardi khalifa, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels that I am making a caliph on earth. And we said ja'al, I am making means continuation. Not that Prophet Adam, he is the caliph only and then there is no more caliph after him. Ja'il is like when you say somebody is adil, somebody is just. Just means what? Now he is just or he, he has that character. So naturally he has that character of justice. Always he is just, you know, has that ability. Uh, here, what you call is an objective matter for uh, the attribute that for the person himself. I say he is just. When Allah said, Ja'il, I'm making on earth a caliph, means that caliphate is continuous in generations. And if it is continuous, then after the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there must be a caliph from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously existing. Uh, who is that caliph? Naturally, the Sunni school of thought, they have no answer. They say the first four righteous caliphs, they say Khulafa al-Rashidin, and after that, they have no other answer also. Sometimes they add Umar ibn Abdul Aziz or Harun Rashid or Mahdi or, well, without any uh, definite reason or proof why they have chosen those not others, but uh, still there is a gap, let us say, between Khulafa Rashidin and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, for example, you know. So there is gap, 40, 50 years gap are there. So if, if that gap is there, then how it will be covered when I saw I'm making a miscontinuation. And after Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, according to them, then who will be the caliph? Then there is no caliph till they said al-Mahdi al-Abbasi. Though all Bani al-Abbas were tyrant rulers, according to uh, the genuine history. But suppose we accept the idea which is said, still there is no continuation. And what about the case after al-Mahdi al-Abbasi? From that time, let us say, more than a thousand years before till today. So who is the caliph of Allah on earth? So here, naturally, it shows that there is no answer for them, but our answer said, uh, always there is a caliph of Allah, whether he is a prophet or he is imam, because imam is also hujjatullah, is a divine evidence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mankind, divine authority of Allah for mankind. So that 
ayah of the Holy Quran shows the continuation. Um, and again, other ayahs we have discussed before, but I'm just running short about them for uh, remembering them. Uh, when it is said, "Inna anta munzir wa had," you are a warner about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And it said there is a guide for every nation. So naturally that guidance must be continuous for every nation after the Holy Prophet Muhammad. The guidance should continue and as we believe continue through the Imams, 12 Imams. And then the 12th Imam, Imam al-Mahdi salam, has to be alive because he is the guide of the time. If he is dead or if he is not born as some of the Sunni scholars they say that we believe in Imam al-Mahdi but he is not born yet he will be born at the end of the time you say okay what about the gap between Imam al-Askari who died at the year 260 Hijri till now which is about 1200 years or 1150 years uh, 180 years till now what about this gap you know who is the uh, Hujjah of Allah, the, the divine proof of Allah for mankind, who is the caliph that Allah said, I am making caliph on earth. So that again shows that there is a guide always existing, and that guide should be Imam who is infallible Imam. And also, when we said Allah said, Wajalnahum aimata yahduna bi amrina, or the other ayah, Wajalna minhum aimata yahduna bi amrina. We made uh, from among them and imams who guide by our command or we made them imam it's two ayahs we made them imam who guide by our command so we said when we discussed this ayah before we said ja'ale is used by Allah for the creation for the universe for the existence for the cosmic um, world around us you know so Allah, we say we made the heaven, we made the earth, we made the sun, we made the light, we made the moon. Made means creation. So the same word creation used for the imams. We made them imams. So imam is part of creation, part of universe around us. It's a role and role for the imam, which is natural law role or you can say is a universal law like gravity is a universal law this is existence of imam is a universal uh, law without the imam as a hadith said the earth will perish without existence of the imam and that ayah we discussed before I am just going f fast through them to remind remember that uh, so as we said then Imam has to be continuously existing. There should be no time where there is no Imam or no Prophet. When we say Ma'asum, no infallible, or no Hujjah of Allah, which cover Hujjah is either Prophet or the Imam, the infallible Imam. So in that, when you say, after approving Imamate of Imam Ali, السلام, naturally there must be an Imams after him. When Imam Ali was assassinated at the year, 40 Hijri, and after that, naturally, there must be an infallible Imams available. And we see from the Hadith, of course, the names of the Imams were mentioned. Uh, it was mentioned by the Holy Prophet وسلم, and also related to Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari. He said, I uh, found a, a precious stone with Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, emerald, uh, it was a green in color, the emerald stone, and she said this stone was brought to me from paradise, and I read on that stone names of the imams. He said, the first imam is Ali ibn Abi Talib, then after him his son, Hassan ibn Ali, then Hussein ibn Ali, then Ali ibn al Hussein, then Muhammad ibn Ali, and then Ja'far, Al-Sadiq, then uh, Musa Al-Kadhim, then Ali Al-Ridha, then Muhammad Al-Jawad, then Ali Al-Hadi, then Al-Hassan Al-Askari, then Muhammad Al-Mahdi, Ajallahu Ta'ala Farajah. So those names of the 12 Imams were 
mentioned in that emerald, which was well gifted to Fatima al Zahra, salam Allah alayha, from heaven, and Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, who is well known Sahabi, he said, I have seen that myself. You know, uh, of course, the traditions from the Holy Prophet, from each Imam, about the Imam after him, there are in tens or in hundreds uh, about some of the Imams, you know. We have no time to go through all that, you know, otherwise it's very clear. Uh, so what I mean, Imamate, according to the followers of al Bayt, is a continuous phenomena. As we say, the Holy Quran says about it, and the traditions of the Prophet says about it. And when we come to the 11th Imam, Imam Hassan al-Askari, who died at the year 260, and because the caliph of the Abbasid ruler, um, they were looking for Imam al-Mahdi because they know he is the one who will remove all types of injustice and in iniquity in, from the societies and will fill the earth with justice and equity. So they know themselves that they are unjust. So they say, this man will kill us, you know. So we have to kill him in advance before the time will come for him to eradicate our dynasty. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, kept him in uh, occultation. They did not see him. Imam al-Askari did not show him, frankly, to all people. He showed him to some of his companions and told them that this is your Imam after me. Well, there are many miracles Imam showed to prove his Imamate. However, what I mean in our belief that the Imam was born at the year 255 Hijri, so well, some historians say 256, anyhow, around that time. And he went to a short occultation. Uh, in that short occultation, there were four direct representatives of Imam al Mahdi, Salamullah alayhi. Uh, one after the other, when they die, Imam said the other one, this third, fourth. And it took about 70 years. After that, Imam said there will be no direct representative, no direct, uh, what you call, naib, nawab al arba naib of the Imam. But the ulama and fuqaha, we call them the general representative, not specific. Those were nominated one by one. But after the fourth naib, which lasted 70 years, from 260 till uh, uh, 330 years, around 329. Uh, then the Imam said, after me, then you refer to the um, religious scholars, the ulama, the fuqaha, the ruwad ahadithina, in different wording are there. Until today, naturally, we are referring to our maraja' when we follow them and we do taqlid of them. So. But I mean, in, in this view, you see the um, picture is complete according to the Holy Quran and the Hadith. But if you say Imam al-Mahdi was not born, then the question will come when Allah said, Inni ja'anun bil khalifa, where is the caliph? The Holy Quran said, had, where is the guide for every nation? The Holy Quran said, we made them Imam. So now they were made them now, making finished and that law complete finished. And then the ahadith from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La takhlu al-ard min hujjah. The earth will never be empty of a divine proof of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Law khuliyat la qulibat or law khuliyat la sakhat bi ahliha. If it is becoming empty of the uh, divine evidence of Allah, then it will perish or will turn uh, upside down, you know, Qulibet turn upside down or Sakhat Bi'aliyah will perish, uh, will com fin finish completely. So all those ahadith generally shows that Imam should be there. So basically we believe that Imamate is a continuous phenomena after Imam Ali alayhi salam. Not only Imam Ali is the Imam and he said there's no other Imam. Because some argue, they say Hadith al kisa said, um, about five, you know, uh, Holy Prophet, Fatima al-Zahra, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, they are five. 
So maximum if we agree about imamate, we agree imamate of Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein. But you have no proof for imamate of the other imams, nine imams who are descendants of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. The rest nine imams, you see, you have no proof because Ayat al-Tathir prove that those five are infallible, let us say, were purified, high purification. And what about the rest of the imam? There is no proof. We say, no, there is a proof. First of all, as we discussed, the ayahs of the Holy Quran shows imamate is a continuous phenomena on earth. Secondly, a guide is there, which is one duties of the imam. And third, there are uh, a hadith of the Holy Prophet وسلم, who mentioned the imam one by one, and especially Imam al-Mahdi. We read in the sermon of the Holy Prophet in Ghadir uh, if you recall, we read that, that the Holy Prophet stressed about Imam al-Mahdi. Two, three times he repeated the Kirakum bil Mahdi. I remind you about the Mahdi who will be from descendants of my uh, grandson Hussein, you know. So even name of Imam al-Mahdi was said in that great sermon uh, of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now some of the hadith of uh, the Holy Prophet to prove that uh, always are Imams and also in our um, Sunni uh, brothers books uh, mentioned uh, like man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi mata mitatan jahliya he who dies without knowing imam of his time he will die a death of ignorant era. Jahiliya is the ignorant era before Islam. So he will die as, let us say, non-Muslim. Because he die as uh, non-believer in Islam. It's called the Asr al-Jahiliya, the era of ignorant era that is before Islam. This is mentioned in Yanabi'u al mawadda and in Tabaqatu al-Hanafiyya. They are both are Sunni authors. Well, another hadith, من مات بغير إمام مات ميتة جاهلية He who dies without Imam dies a death of ignorant era. This is, hadith is in Musnad Ahmad, one of the six important books of hadith uh, for our Sunni brothers. In Hiliyatul Al-Awliya, also in, mentioned in Majma'u Al-Zawaid and so on many other books. Well, third, the same meaning, but in a little different wording, you know. He who dies, and there is no imam upon him. He died in ignorant era, you see. The first hadith say, Lam ya'rif, the one who dies without knowing imam. So if Imam al-Mahdi is the Imam of the time and if the people do not know him, do not accept him, do not recognize him, they will die a death of ignorant era. The first hadith say Ya'rif, without knowing. Second hadith, one he died without Imam. Without Imam, well again, he doesn't know who is his Imam. He doesn't respect Imam of the time to say, my Imam is Imam al-Mahdi who is existing. You say, there is no Imam. The third hadith, there is no Imam upon him. وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ Imam. Well, uh, the fourth hadith, مَنْ مَاتَ وَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ Imam فَمِيتَتُهُ مِيتَةٌ جَاهِلِيَّةٌ Well, again, that is in Majma'u Zawaid and other books. And well, in another wording, man mata wa laysa fi unuqihi bay'a mata mitatan jahiliya. He who dies without pledging allegiance. We say on his neck allegiance, that is sure that he has pledged allegiance. Allegiance to whom? Naturally to the Imam, to the right Imam. Then he will die a death of ignorant era. That hadith in Sahih Muslim uh, and Sunan al Kubra for Bayhaqi. Uh, and well, many other books. So what I mean, these are a hadith which say that you need to know about your imam, and if you die without knowing your imam, 
you will die a death of ignorant era. And if Imam al-Mahdi is going to be born later on, as this brother, Sunni brother says, their scholar says, then who is Imam of our time now? Means we have no Imam, we do not believe in Imam, we do not know our Imam, there is no Imam upon us, it's a different wording. We have no bay'ah, no allegiance to an Imam. So it means all of us will die a death of ignorant era. You see, so it is not possible materially. So there must be an existing Imam, and that is what we say there is Imam al Mahdi, alayhi salam, who is existing and he was born and he is living. Why he is in occultation, that is another subject we are going, inshallah, to discuss about reasons for occultation or his benefit in occultation. Now we are discussing about proof of that. Also, when you say, the Holy Quran, you say, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ A day means a day of judgment where we call uh, every, every people with their imam, you know. Uh, that is in uh, Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 71. يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ A day we will call every people with their imam. Well, there must be naturally imam of the time. So he called, you are followers of that imam. You are followers of that imam. Maybe imam, righteous imam, or maybe a wrong imam. Because in the Holy Quran, there are some imams they call for a wrong path. Uh, so those who ha believe that ulil amr, other than infallible imam, they will be called by their ulil amr. Will their ulil amr, who are the tyrant rulers, kings and rulers and presidents, will they save us in the day of judgment if we are called by them? Because I live in this Muslim country, so my president is my imam and he will save me in the day of judgment. Those who lived in Iraq and Saddam is their ruler, Saddam will save them in the day of judgment. Naturally, no Muslim will accept that and no Muslim won't in the day of judgment, he will be reselected with the leader of his country where we know the leaders, the kings or rulers are uh, unjust rulers and nowadays a lot of revolutions in different uh, Arab countries and uh, Muslim countries against the tyrant rulers who are there. So naturally they are not Ulil Amr and not our Imam. Yeah, they are rulers, dictators, that is fine, but not Ulil Amr. The Holy Quran said, not our Imam. The Holy Quran says that you will be called by your Imam. And if we come in the day of judgment, we say we know our Imam. This is Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraja, Wujalana min Ansari wa Awani. So we know our Imam. We will not die a death of ignorant era. We will die a death of a Muslim who is aware of his imam, aware of his duty, and he will be called by that imam. Uh, now if we go to a hadith of the Holy Prophet, again the general hadith that the Holy Prophet said, al min ba'di ithna ashar, kulluhum min Quraysh. We recited that Imams after me are 12, all of them are from Quraysh, a tribe. Well, probably in some are from Min Ahli Bayti, from my household, from my progeny. Uh, now, naturally, if there are 12, that will show us the only 12 available who are infallible, respected by all Muslims throughout generations, are the Imams of the Shias. Uh, when you, you, read about biography of Imam Zain al-Abidin, even the Sunni scholar, they said he was very great, very pious, very knowledgeable. He, mo he was the most knowledgeable of his time. When they discuss about his son, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, they said he is the most knowledgeable of his time. When they discuss about Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, they said he is the most knowledgeable of his time. And so on, when they come to Imam Musa ibn Ja'far, Imam al-Ridha, Imam al -Jawad, they said he is top in knowledge, in piety, uh, uh, of his time, you know. So all the Imams were praised by their friends and enemies. 
together. Even their enemies used to respect them and know their greatness. So naturally, they are the 12 Imams where the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said all of them are um, Imams. Well, hadith are uh, many uh, hadith uh, about that. You know, I'm not going to uh, discuss all the uh, Senate of the hadith. Now, if you want to come about Imam al-Mahdi, salamu alayhi, uh, um, actually, um, that needs uh, hours and hours to discuss all a hadith, you know, in short. But somebody did a research uh, about a hadith regarding Imam al-Mahdi. First of all, uh, if we come to the Holy Quran, which shows the necessity of appearance of Imam al-Mahdi, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised the believers in Surah An-Nur, Ayah 55, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلِيُمَكِّنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمْ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ Till end of the ayah, Allah promised those who believe and did among you and did good deeds that to inherit the earth. Istakhlifa means they will take over the earth as the people before them have inherited the earth and Allah will give them power to run their affairs and then their religion which was chosen for them and will change them uh, after their fear, a peaceful life. They will worship Allah and will never call a partner for Allah. So that ayah shows that the believers were promised of the victory and to rule the earth as, well, previous religions, nations, uh, ideologies, you know, um, dictators, rulers have ruled. Well, a time will come that the believers will rule. Well, when that is going to happen? Till now, it did not happen. All what happened, you know, part of the earth, Probably the believers will not all the earth know. Naturally, that will happen at the time of appearance of Imam al-Mahdi. Well, in the other ayah in Surah Al-Qasas, ayah 5, وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ عِمَّا وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ And we want to give our favor to those who are weakened on earth and we make them imams, and we make them the inheritor. So Allah promised that he will give his favor, he will favor the believers, and will those who are weakened, those who are weakened naturally, the believers, the true believer, the sincere believer, the honest believers, are now weakened by the dictators and the powerful uh, unjust rulers in different parts of the world who do not like the religious people to be there and try to either eradicate them like the dictators will do or to uh, make a propaganda and uh, blasphemy against the believers so that the people will not follow them or will not believe on what they say. So a, a war against them whether through media or a physical war, is there on the believers. So those are the weakened. They feel they are lonely, they are alone. The sincere believer, they feel they are alone. They are at risk, they are at fear. Uh, there is harassment against them everywhere, wherever they go, from any country to other country they go, that harassment is there. So they are the weakened. So Allah said, we'll promise them that I will complete my favor or I give my favor to them and I made them imams and I made them the inheritors. Now, the most example of them is Imam al-Mahdi himself because he has gone into occultation for the fear of being killed. He was afraid to be killed by the rulers, Abbasid rulers at his time. And even nowadays, if he come out without a preparation of the earth, naturally the dictators will kill him right away. So the most example of the weakened person is Imam al-Mahdi. He's afraid to be killed 
and Allah kept him in a state of occultation and then he will come and he will be the Imam and he will inherit the earth. Well, again in the third ayah in Surah Al-Anbiya, ayah 105, وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عَبَادِيَ الصَّالِحُونَ We have written in the Zabur, the book of Prophet Dawood alayhi salam, after dhikr, after remembrance, that the earth will be inherited by the, uh, our, my good servants, you know, Ibadiya Salihun. Well, the best example of good servant of Allah is the Imam, naturally. And then the believers with him will, you know. So, in the Holy Quran, there are many places which point out about uh, reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi and then he will fill the earth with justice and equity after being filled with injustice and oppression. But still some did research about number of ahadith uh, in the Muslim books, Shia and Sunni books, how many hundreds or how many thousands of hadith about Imam al-Mahdi alone, you know, and you see the statistics is, is uh, uh, great, you say, the traditions which mention that he will reappear uh, are 657 in number. The traditions that tell that he is from progeny of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi are 389. The traditions that say he is son of, from the descendants of Imam Ali Alayhi Salam, are 214 and then the tradition that mentions he is from the descendants of Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha daughter of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are 192 because to be descended of Imam Ali may not be son of Fatima to Zahra may be son of other wives of Imam Ali but no other hadith they said he is son of Imam Ali and son of Fatima to Zahra, from both are mentioned in them. And then the traditions that say he is the ninth one from the children of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the ninth one, are 148 tradition, 48 hadith. And then the tradition says that he is from the descendants of Imam Zain al Abidin, the fourth Imam. 185 hadith and then the tradition that said he is son of Imam Hassan al-Askari are 146 hadith and again who is Imam Hassan al-Askari there are traditions that they say Imam Hassan al-Askari is son of Ali al-Hadi son of Muhammad al-Jawad and his fathers are 147 hadith and then the traditions that say he will fill the earth with justice and um, equity is 132 hadith. And then the tradition that they say Imam al-Mahdi will have a long occultation. The people will not see him. He will be in occultation uh, are 91 hadith. The tradition that say his life will be very long 318 hadith. The tradition that, that they say Islam will cover all over the earth after his reappearance, 47 hadith. Then tradition that say he is the 12th Imam among Ahlul Bayt, Imams from Ahlul Bayt, salamu alayhi, the 12th one. Actually, Imam Ali is the first and Imam Al Mahdi is the 12th Imam. There are 136 hadith. The traditions which has come about his birth. You know, some people doubt that he was not born and there is only one hadith, we don't know, not clear. Uh, only the midwife who took, took care of his birth, you know, she said, and his aunt, and naturally this is not to be approved. No, it is not like that, you know. This making simplifying the matter. There is uh, 214 hadith about his birth, you know, is, is there, you know. So all that is, is there, and we can't say 
a small number of ahadith are there. When you come about the hadith in the, I mean, some of them in the main uh, Sunni books, uh, for example, uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal in his Musnad, he said, related to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, لو لم يبقى من الدهر إلا يوم واحد لبعث الله رجلا من أهل بيتي يملأها عدلا كما ملئت جورا uh, If from the time none will remain except one day then definitely Allah will send one man from my أهل البيت from my progeny who will fill it with justice as it was filled with oppression so, so much stress that if the time continued and there is only one day before end of the time, still in that one day Allah will send Imam al-Mahdi to fill the earth with justice. So much stress that not that, okay, the time now passed and it is too late. No, it's not. Even if one day remains, then Allah has to send one. And that is, as I said, in Musnad Ahmad. And Abu Dawood also related to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لا تذهب أو لا تنقضي الدنيا حتى يملك العرب رجل من أهل بيتي يواطئ اسمه اسمي this is written in Jami' al-Usul uh, that the, the life will not finish or will not go in different wording till the Arabs will be ruled by a man from my progeny, his name is similar to my name. His name is Muhammad al-Mahdi. Actually, it's Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Dawood also related to Umm Salama, Umm al-Mu'mineen, wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, I hear the Holy Prophet, says, al-Mahdi min itrati min wildi Fatima. Al-Mahdi, is from my progeny, from the children of Fatima al-Zahra, sallamullahi alayha. That is also in Jami' al-Usul. And then, a termidi related to Ibn Mas'ud, that the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Yali rajulun min ahli bayti yuwati wa ismu ismi. A man from my progeny will rule, and his name is similar to my name. And he said, Ibn Mas'ud, and Abu Hurairah said, لو لم يبقى من الدنيا إلا يوم لطول الله ذلك اليوم حتى يلي means not starting of the hadith, not to rule. Abu Hurairah give the full hadith. He said, if from the time of worldly life only one day will remain, Allah will make that day so long that a man from my progeny will rule and fill it, uh, his name is similar to my name according to this hadith. Uh, well, in another hadith that is in Sunan Ibn Majah and Kanz al uh, from Abi Imama, Imama al Bahili, Qala Khatabana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, the Holy Prophet delivered a sermon, and most of his sermon was about the Dajjal who will come at the end. And he warned us from him. And then he said, إِنَّهُ لَمْ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ ذُرَعَ اللَّهُ ذُرِّيَةَ آدَمَ أَعْظَمُ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْدَجَّالِ There is no um, problem and quarrel and the fitna, the mischief which will happen since Allah has created Adam till today as the problem created by the Dajjal. Then, the Holy Prophet continued the hadith and he said, وَإِمَامُهُمْ رَجُلٌ صَالِحٌ The Imam of the Muslims is a, a good man. فَبَيْنَمَا إِمَامُهُمْ قَدْ تَقَدَّمَ لِيُصَلِّي بِهُمُ الصُّبْحِ And when their Imam is standing to pray congregational prayer of the morning prayer, إِذْ نَزَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمْ Prophet Jesus, son of Mary, will come, will descend down from heaven as we believe he is alive and he will come down. Then, فرجع ذلك الإمام I mean, that Imam will go back in order to allow 
Jesus Christ to lead the prayer, but then Jesus will put his hand on his shoulder, shoulder of the Imam, and will tell him, you go to the front and lead the prayer because it was established for you and that Imam will lead the player and he will pray. So naturally, uh, talking about Imam al-Mahdi and coming up with Jesus, and then Imam al-Mahdi will ask Jesus to lead the prayer. Jesus will say, no, it is your time now, and you are the Imam of the time. You lead the prayer. So Imam al-Mahdi will come to the front and will lead the prayer. So these are some of the hadith about Imam al-Mahdi if we have to go uh, through all of them, naturally it will take days and days because uh, there are, according to some, more than 3,000 books r mentioned or written about Imam al-Mahdi but that short probably is sufficient for today. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi Muhammad wa ajjal farajah.